Hello students of science. In this video we're going to talk about what happens when acids and bases react with each other. First thing we need to do is remember what Bronsted-Lowry acids are. That's where you'd have a Bronsted-Lowry acid which is a proton donor and a Bronsted-Lowry base which is a proton acceptor. So the acid donates the proton, the base accepts the proton. Kind of a reminder from before. So here I have my acid donated it. Here we have water in this case is uh, acting as either an acid or base depending upon it. So here I have an acid, breaks apart, that becomes the base because that's now going to accept a proton. So what you have remaining after a bronsted lowry acid has given up its proton, you have what is called a conjugate base because it's now more or less ready to receive a proton. So we start here with an acid, a proton donor, and a base, a proton receiver. The proton is going to go from the acid to the base, but what's left now is called a conjugate base, and this is called a conjugate acid because that one is now ready to donate proton, this one's now ready to re-receive it. So bronsted lowry bases also have what's called a conjugate acid that's going to donate the proton it just received. You'll notice here my color coding is not an accident. Acids I'm always going to be doing in red, and I'm going to have conjugate acids as kind of like a light red to indicate that it's kind of a little bit weaker than the original one. So the base is going to be the dark blue, the conjugate base is going to be the light blue. So the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. The stronger the base, the weaker the conjugate acid. As one goes up, the other one goes down. So of course this is as vice versa. So some examples. Here I have hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid plus water is going to make fluorine ion, the fluorine anion, and the hydronium cation here. So the hydrofluoric acid, that of course is my acid, but what's left at the end, after that proton leaves, that is going to be my conjugate base. Water in this case is going to be the base, and what's left after it takes on that proton is called the conjugate acid. Here another one, hydrochloric acid plus water, the chlorine anion is going to be my conjugate base, and the hydronium of course is going to be my conjugate acid, so that's now ready to donate a proton. So acid will always become the conjugate base on the product side, and the base will always become the conjugate acid on the product side. Here of hydrochloric acid donating a proton to ammonia. That means the ammonia, now that it's picked up a proton, now that one is going to be the conjugate acid because it's ready to donate that proton back to the conjugate base, and we're back to where we began. So a couple other examples. Here I have acetic acid plus water makes the hydronium cation plus the acetate anion. So acids are going to be in red, bases in blue, conjugate acids in light red, conjugate bases in light blue. My acetic acid is going to be my acid, and here I have the conjugate base, so what's left when this proton is donated is going to be my conjugate base. This is going to be my base, and that of course is going to have a proton added to it, it's going to be the proton acceptor. This means that the hydronium, that is going to be my new conjugate acid. Hydrobromic acid plus water is going to make the hydronium cation plus the bromine anion. Hydrobromic acid is, of course, my acid. What's left? That bromine anion is going to be my conjugate base. This is my base, and after it accepts the proton, that is now the conjugate acid. So acids and bases always work this way. So what's left after the acid donates is going to be my conjugate base. What's left after the base accepts the proton is going to be the conjugate acid. You can see some examples here. Here's another one, acid plus water. What's left is the conjugate base. It has lost that proton and given it to what is now the conjugate acid, that water which is now ready to donate that back. So this one is now a proton donor, but we call it the conjugate because it just picked it up temporarily. Again, another conjugate acid-base pair, and another acid-base conjugate pair there as well. Now we have what's called an amphoteric substance. An amphoteric substance is one that can either act as an acid or a base, depending upon the circumstances. Water is the one that you are most commonly going to see. Here we have water acting as a base. So remember, a base is a proton acceptor. Sulfuric acid plus water is going to lead to the hydronium cation plus the anion after sulfuric acid has donated a proton. Acids and bases, red and blue, this means water is going to be acting as a base. That's going to be acting as a proton acceptor, becoming the hydronium cation. This one is going to be my proton donor. So here we have water acting as a base, accepting a proton. Here we have a very similar situation, but now we have water which is going to act as an acid, because it can either accept a proton or donate a proton. Here we have ammonia plus water is going to make the ammonium cation and the hydroxide anion. Here water is going to be an acid, because it's going to be donating that proton to the ammonia. Here ammonia is going to be acting as a base. So water took both forms, acid and a base, depending upon the conditions. The reason it does this because water has those two lone pair of electrons that can accept a proton and those two hydrogen atoms that of course could donate a proton there. 
Here I have my amphoteric substance accepting a proton, so this means in this case that is a base. Here I have the exact same thing acting as an acid because it is now donating a proton. So amphoteric can go either way. Now let's talk about what happens when you combine acids and bases. So sodium hydroxide is a strong base. It completely dissociates to produce hydroxide with the equation there. Sodium hydroxide makes that sodium cation plus hydroxide anion. Hydrochloric acid, or HCl, is a strong acid and it completely dissociates to produce your acid there, your proton. So hydrochloric acid plus water is going to make that uh, hydronium cation plus the chlorine anion. So now we've seen these. If we mix these two, you do get a reaction between the hydronium and the hydroxide ion. So let's take a look. Here is the whole ionic equation for it. But with a neutralization reaction, we have to cancel out my spectator ion. Here I have chlorine as both a reactant and a product. If it's on both sides, I can cancel that one out because nothing's happening with it. Same thing with the sodium cation. It's found on both the reactant side and the product side. That means that these are spectator ions. What's left is called my net ionic equation. So all I'm left with here is the hydronium cation plus the hydroxide anion that is going to make water. That is called a neutralization reaction. Neutralization is the reaction of hydronium plus hydroxide to form water molecules. Neutralization is the combining those that make water and a salt. In this case, the salt would have been the sodium chloride that was dissolved in solution there. So acid plus base is going to yield salt plus water. So there's my water coming from the neutralization of acids and bases. Here's some examples. Sodium hydroxide plus nitric acid is going to make water plus sodium nitrate. Here is my base. Here is my acid. They are going to react, and one of the end results is going to be water, in this case, plus a salt. Another one, hydrochloric acid plus calcium hydroxide. The hydrochloric acid is my acid, calcium hydroxide is my base, going to form water as part of the neutralization. Sulfuric acid plus potassium hydroxide, that is going to make potassium sulfate and water. So of course here are my salts, potassium sulfate, calcium chloride, sodium nitrate, and my water as another result. So neutralization is always going to result in water plus some kind of a salt. Acid plus base, salt plus water. So that's the end result of a neutralization.